Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Elhamdülillahi Rabbil alemin. Ve salatu ve selamu ala şerefil enbiyai vel mursalin. Muhammedun Resulullah sallallahu aleyhi ve ala alihi ve sahbihi ve sellem. Teslimen kesiren kesiren. Amma ba'du my brothers and sisters. We are in the final uh, week of Ramadan. And I want to remind myself and you about the divine origin of our religion. 1458 years ago a window opened in the heavens and God spoke to man. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent his first revelation to his beloved messenger Muhammad Mustafa sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sallam through his messenger Jibreel alayhi salam. This was the spoken word. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke to Jibreel alayhi salam in a way that suits his majesty and grace. And Jibreel alayhi salam spoke to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alihi wa sallam. This was not the first time that this had happened, but it was to be the last. That initiative of re-establishing the direct connection between the creator and his creatures, between God and humans, between Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and you and I, is Islam. Islam is for all human beings, irrespective of ethnicity and color and race or origin. Those who accept this connection and benefit from it are called Muslim. The first words revealed were read in the name of your Rabb who created everything. Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. The word read has many meanings. It means to read as in reading a book. It means to recite something which is written. It also means to read the signs you see around you and understand what they mean. Sometimes there are expressions on the face of your beloved which tell you without a single word being spoken what is happening in their heart. If you can read them. And if you cannot read them, then you pay the price. Sometimes gestures tone of voice, movements, and demeanor tell those who can read them far more and far more truthfully the real story. And that's why they say the body does not lie. The command read was given to our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This was to encourage him and all those who were to hear that command from him to read the signs of the Creator in his creation. To read the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Kainat and to marvel at his power, his mercy, his wisdom and accept him as the only one worthy of worship. When we see in the signs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we love him and we obey him. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said about that, Sanurihim ayatina fila faqi wa fi anfusihim hatta yatabayyana lahum annahul haqq. أَوَلَمْ يَكْفِي بِرَبِّكَ أَنَّهُ عَلَىٰ كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ Allah said in Surah Fusilat, We will show them our signs in the universe and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this Qur'an is the truth. Is it not enough that your Rabb is a witness over all things? Imagine, for example, let us see what are the, some of the signs that we see but we don't read. Imagine if blood didn't clot. Hemophiliacs don't need to imagine it. Imagine if our hair had nerves and nerve endings. You would need to go under general anesthesia to get a haircut. Likewise for nails. Cut a nail a little more deeply and you will know what I mean. Imagine veins without venous non-return valves. Your blood would puddle in your ankles and your feet and your heart and brain would be starved of oxygen. Oxygenated and unoxygenated blood would mix. Imagine if rain and snow didn't descend in single drops and flakes but instead it all came down in one mass. Hadley for example, this town has an area of 24.7 square miles, say 25 square miles. That is 16,000 acres. 
One inch of rain per acre weighs 113 tons. In 2023, Hadley received 50 inches of rain and snow precipitation. That weighed 90 million 400,000 tons. This fell from an average height of 15,000 feet. Imagine if this entire amount of precipitation, 90 million 400,000 tons, fell in one mass. That would be like a tidal wave hitting you from above, 15,000 feet above. There would be a lake of 25 square miles here and no Hadley. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends it down drop by drop, flake by flake, as a sign of his mercy. Imagine if you were given total control of all bodily functions, meaning that they would function on command only. That means you could never sleep, but your heart, your digestive system, your vascular system, your brain function and so on would stop, would shut down. Imagine that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you everything you asked for. Now you may think that would be wonderful, but from my vantage point of being perhaps 40 years ahead of most of you, I can tell you that I distinctly remember some things that I begged and pleaded with Allah for. But in His wisdom and in His mercy, He did not give them to me. Today, I thank Him profusely for not granting me that dua or those duas. While still rewarding me for making the dua because dua is ibadah and it is rewarded. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reminded us to read the signs in creation. In Surah Al-Imran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, Inna fi khalqi samawati wal ardi wa akhtilafi al-layli wa al-nahari la ayati li'ulil al-bab. Al-ladhina yadhkuroon Allah qiyaman wa qu'udahu ala junubihim wa yatafakkaroon. Wa yatafakkaroon fi khalqi samawati wal ardi. رَبَّنَا مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلًا سُبْحَانَكَ سُبْحَانَكَ فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said indeed in the creation of the heavens and the earth and the alternation of the night and the, of the day and the night there are signs for people of reason, people of wisdom, people of understanding, people of intelligence. Who are these people? Allah defined them. He said, they are those who remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, who recognize their creator, who know their creator, who recognize him and they remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, standing, sitting and lying on their sides. And they reflect on the creation of the heavens and the earth. And they make dua and they say, our Rabb, you have not created all of this without purpose. This is not an accident. This, this, that, this didn't just happen like that without any reason, without any intelligent creator behind it. You did not create... All of this without purpose. Glory be to you. Protect us from the punishment of the fire. <coughs> I'm a wildlife photographer and I spend a lot of time in the bush. To read signs is literally a matter of life and death for me. When I'm walking in the African felt or in the, in the Indian forests, and if I see lion or tiger tracks, I can read them and I can see which direction they are going in, whether the pug marks are of a male or a female, whether the animal is walking slowly or running, also including whether it is hungry or not, the, the depth of the impression of the footprint. I can read all of this. Or I can tell myself that these are not really pug marks of lions or tigers. And they don't indicate the presence of a lion or a tiger down the road. But these are accidental creations of a chance wind. However I choose to interpret the signs, it won't change the fact that I'm about to walk into a lion or a tiger. What will change is whether I'm prepared for that or not. What will change is whether I will be able to get a good photograph or the tiger makes a kill. The lion has dinner. To read signs is important because a sign is not merely about color or symbol or shape. A sign has meaning. It points to a certain direction and it warns us about consequences. 
We need signs every day when we drive. And if we fail to read the sign or misread it, <clears throat> there are consequences, some very serious, that we will have to bear. Why then don't we see this with respect to our Creator? It is to awaken our connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorious and magnificent, our Creator, Protector, Sustainer, Provider, Rabbul Alameen, to whom we will all return, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sends Ramadan. About this month of fasting, he said, Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu, kutiba alaykum usiyamu, kama kutiba ala ladheena min qablikum la'allakum tattakoon. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, O you who believe, fasting has been prescribed upon you as it was prescribed for those before you, <coughs> so that perhaps you may become mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Taqwa is that blessed state where a person is always conscious of his or her connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and revels in that feeling and ensures that they never do anything that can dull the strength of that connection or sever it. <coughs> Taqwa produces tranquility and knowing that the one in charge is the one who can do everything and who loves me. You may have a situation in life where there is somebody who loves you very much, but they're helpless. They can't do anything for you. And on the contrary, you might have somebody who is very powerful, but who doesn't care a hoot about you. But here is the situation with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, where he loves us more than our mothers could possibly love us. And he also has the power to do absolutely anything without any reservations, without any borders, without any um, conditions. How do you reciprocate this love? Through obedience. Obedience is the way to express and reciprocate our love for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And fasting teaches us this lesson. <clears throat> We obey because we know He loves us and wants the best for us. And He knows what that is far better than we ever can. So we do what He commands. He do, we do whatever He commands us to do and we stay away from whatever He commands us to stay away from. We know that He needs nothing and nothing can benefit or harm Him. So when He shows us a way of life, we are honored to live it. On the authority of the great companion of Rasulullah Abu Dhar al-Fari who quoted from Rasulullah who quoted from his Rabb Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Hadith Qudsi that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said O my slaves I have forbidden I have forbidden zulum <coughs> oppression on myself and I have made it forbidden among you so do not oppress one another O my slaves all of you are astray except those whom I have guided. So seek guidance from me and I will guide you. O my slaves, all of you are hungry except those whom I have fed. So seek food from me and I will feed you. O my slaves, all of you are naked except those who I have clothed. So seek clothing from me and I will clothe you. O my slaves, you commit sins by day and by night and I forgive all sins. So seek forgiveness from me and I will forgive you. O oh, my slaves, you can neither harm me nor benefit me. O oh, my slaves, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans of you and the jinn of you were all as pious as the most pious heart of any individual among you, then this would not increase my kingdom by an iota. O oh, my slaves, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans of you and the jinn of you were all as wicked as the most wicked heart of any individual amongst you, then this would not decrease my kingdom and iota. O oh, my slaves, if the first of you and the last of you and the humans of you and the jinns of you were all to stand together in one place and ask me every single thing you can imagine and I were to give everyone whatever he requested instantly in that moment, 
then that would not decrease what I possess except what is decreased of the ocean when a needle is dipped in it. O oh, my slaves, it is but your deeds that I account for you and then recompense you for. So he who finds good, let him praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he who finds other than that, let him blame no one but himself. And this hadith is in Muslim. What I have said to you in English is the interpretation of that. And I have said, uh, I have added some, a little bit of explanation in the hadith. So what I'm quoting is not the exact word of the hadith. The exact word of the hadith is in Arabic. This is Allah. This is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalla. Ramadan is the boot camp to reboot our lives and transform them and place them on the highway to success. In Ramadan we stay away during the hours of daylight even from things that are normally permitted only to emphasize for ourselves the importance of staying away from all that is prohibited throughout our lives. Ramadan shows us that we can do it if we wish. If we wish to please the one to whom we owe everything and who we hope to meet one day in a state when he is pleased with us. And who is that? He is the one who said about himself, who introduced himself. And he said, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyu al-qayyum La ta'khuduhu sinatu wa la nawm Lahu ma fi s-samawati wa ma fi l-ard Man dha al-lazhi yashfa'u indahu illa bi-idhni Ya'lamu ma bayna aydihim wa ma khalfahum وَلَا يُحِيْتُونَ بِشَيْءٍ مِّنْ عِلْمِهِ إِلَّا بِمَا شَاءٍ وَسِعَى كُرْسِيُّ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ وَلَا يَقُوْدُهُ حِفْظُهُمَا وَهُوَ الْعَلِيُّ الْعَظِيمُ الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله والله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو عالم الغيب والشهادة هو الرحمن الرحيم هو الله الذي لا إله إلا هو الملك القدوس السلام المؤمن المؤمن العزيز الجبار المتكبر سبحان الله عما يشركون هو الله الخالق البارئ المسافر له الأسماء الحسنى يسبح له ما في السماوات والأرض وهو العزيز الحكيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله أحد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا أحد the meaning of what I recited, the first passage was from Surah Al-Baqarah, the famous ayah, the greatest ayah of the Quran, which is called Ayatul Kursi. Allah, there is no God worthy of worship except Him, the ever-living, all-sustaining. Neither drowsiness nor sleep overtakes Him. To Him belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is in the earth. Who could possibly intercede with Him without His permission? He fully knows what is ahead of them and what is behind them, but no one can grasp any of his knowledge except what he wills to reveal. His seat encompasses the heavens and the earth, and the preservation of both does not tire him, for he is the Most High, the Great. The second passage was Surah Al-Hashr, the last ayat. He is Allah. There is no God worthy of worship except Him. Knower of the seen and the unseen. Knower of the perceivable and the unperceivable. He is the most compassionate, most merciful. He is Allah. There is no God except Him. The King, the most holy, the all-perfect, the source of serenity, the watcher of all, the almighty, the supreme in might, the majestic, glorified is Allah for above, far above all that they associate with him in worship. 
And the last one is Surat Al Ikhlas, which is considered to, considered to be one third of the Quran. When Allah said, Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, He is Allah, one and indivisible. Allah, the sustainer, needed by all, but He needs none of them. He has never had offspring, nor was He born, and there is none comparable to Him. This is Allah who we worship. This is Allah who we love above all else. وصلى الله على نبينا الكريم وعلى اله وصحبه اجمعين برحمتك يا رب العالمين